Okay, here we go again. Real fast one. I'm going to specifically talk about this product here. You can see the name of it. I don't know how to pronounce it. Chloroprotect. Uh, here's my here are my comments, and I'm going to remove this. I'm not going to leave it here. This is not an anode. Therefore, this product is not repairing your rotten egg smell. You're not getting rid of it. Basically, you just remove the anode and remove one of the pieces needed to make your rotten egg smell. It is also made of titanium that especially, that is especially not an anode. Even if this was turned off, it would not be an anode in the, in the environment of the metals and its sphere of influence, the heating element and the metal line tank. Okay, so there it is. Um, so I click on this little lady here, it brings me to the product. Here's the product. This is not, not it says eliminates rotten egg smell and water. It's not eliminating it. It's not doing it. This is just increasing the uh, the uh, galvanic response of the two metals that are left in the tank, and that would be the element, and it would be and the elements can be can be made of a few things. It would be the element, and it would be. Not yet. It would be you would pull it out of the formula because it's energized. At that point, it doesn't count. Uh, I can't find anywhere where it counts formula-wise, but I can find this for you. So, this is the NASA. This is in the other video, and this is going to be a lot shorter. This is NASA's website. So NASA's badass, right? So NASA can show you. I could show you with other people too, but everybody knows NASA. So I'm going to go with this one. Electrochemical reaction. The two metal strips. Shown below are exposed to the same acid, okay, your same water. It's considered as water. You got copper and you got zinc. They're going to, next diagram, they're going to put water in it. So I could read you this. Okay, it's just whatever the corrosion is right now, it's, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Because here I'm going to show you this. Okay, the hydrogen, okay. Uh, if we now connect the two metal samples, that's a zinc and a copper, with a wire and measure their electrical and, and measure the electricity through the connection, the connected wire, we find that one of the electrodes becomes different in potential than the other, that the corrosion rate of the copper decreases, while the corrosion rate of the zinc increases. By connecting the two metals, we have made the copper a cathode, and then the electrochemical cell, uh, and the zinc has become an anode. The accelerated corrosion of the zinc Maybe so much that the, that, the, that the oxidation of the copper stops and it becomes protected from corrosion. Look at that. It acts like it's protected from corrosion. You can't even touch it because of the electrical charge is in it. All right, so follow down here. Um, the reaction of the copper cathode becomes blank. The voltage of copper shifts to a point where hydrogen ion reduces reduction and can occur at the, at the uh, copper surface. So, all right. So you see what that is. Now, we go to this. This is the scale. This is NASA also. So now we have that, that product that claims, this product claims to be titanium. Titanium. And we go over here. We find titanium. Titanium is on a scale. This scale is going to show uh, least active. The, call it passive. They're not active. Up here and down here is more active. Of the same thing. So you see 18.3 stainless steel active. 183 type 304 passive. This metal, these are metals. So here's your titanium. It's up here at the top of the damn scale. And so these people are, are, are lying to you when they call it an anode. Anode rod. It's not an anode. Especially in this environment. I, um, the environment that they're trying to sell it in. For it to be an anode, as a titanium, it had to be the other things in that tank would have to be um, uh, made of the higher value here, platinum or gold. Um, graphite, silver, or this probably expensive steel here. Um, and they actually made the tanks more like mild steel way down here. And then what was in there was magnesium. And you can also put an aluminum uh, anode rod in. And so this is lower on the scale. you got a tank made of cast iron. At least not forget we have an element. The element could be everything from nickel to stainless steel element to... Um, to a um, to just regular metal steel, so to get the least amount of reaction, the further these are the further these are apart. Magnesium from from uh, 
Let's go. We know we know magnesium rots out pretty good in there, and we know the tank's made of cast iron, and we know let's, you can pick whatever. And you can say the elements made of cast iron. I mean, a uh, mild steel also. So that that's a significant jump from here to here that that magnesium significantly wears down. Um, so then we have the mild steel here. So I'm bashing the tank because it doesn't work. So once you put that electrical charge in it, as as I um as you found out here, you get no loss here. You first off, this thing is doesn't even wear the hell down now. The uh, the electrical charge element they brag about it has it it no longer wears down. So if they're bragging it no longer wears down, how can it be an anode? An anode is by nature is sacrificial. It's the sacrificial guy, and so you're telling me it's an anode. But then you're telling me this thing doesn't freaking wear down. So, you know, you know, kill me, why don't you? You know, just tell me anything. So let's see if I can go in here. Um, right in the egg smell. Replaces water heat tanks, existing hex. Water softness. Extends life for 20 years. Okay. So it's not extending your life with your water heater 20 years. I don't, they don't, I don't think it's been out that long. But, um, the problem is again, and I'm going to wrap this up, is that this is that that this is that product, if you will, and let's call this water. At that point, it no longer. I was trying to find the darn link. It no. It was just junk mail. It will no longer um, act as a anode. If you, if you turn this off, it's not an anode. It's it's not even an anode in this environment. This is the diagram I'm looking for. So you juice this up. When you do that, this metal rod here and this metal one here and that steel tank there, you know, those are the two that it's actually making to make a decision between those two, forcing the decision to say which one's going to be the cathode and what's going to be the anode, and it counts itself out. So we call this method corrosion control cathodic protection. See, by connecting the two metals, we have made the copper a cathode and an electrochemical cell, and the zinc has become an anode. The accelerated corrosion of the zinc may be much, may be much, so much so that the oxide of the copper stops and becomes right. So this is the cathode and anode. And when they energize that device in there, it's a cathode, and everything else becomes an anode. And now it's a choice between those two anodes. That is, what's left in that tank in this environment is that metal tank, which we're going to call mild steel, and this. And, and so you're like, I'm going to buy a stainless steel one. That's badass. That's the right decision. And it is not. Once you increase the electricity like that, you the further these things are apart, the more they're corrosive, remember? So they're corrosive more to the lower one. So if your tank is mild steel and you buy a stainless steel um, element, and even if it was this stainless steel element of this of this 18.3 stainless steel type 304 active, it's still got a couple of steps down. And when that electricity comes on, which is always on with this cat with this uh with this um, this uh, forced cathodic thing with electricity, this the electric source, let's just call it, and they call it, what the hell they call it, an uh, anode. It's an electric source, it's a stick. Once you do that, um, you're now making this system say, okay, we got what of our metals in here? Cast iron and stainless steel. Okay, stain, cast iron is lowering this lever on it, so we're going to make this the... Uh, the, uh, this will be the cathode, the stainless steel will be, and the cast iron will be the anode. So it's going to get eaten out. I mean the mild steel again. The mild steel is going to get eaten out. The mild steel is the side of your walls. I don't know about you, but I'd rather replace an element, heating elements, than replace my my um, my, my, my mild stainless steel my box. So you would like to find a heating element that's also made of just steel. Just steel. That would make it equal. No reaction. It's just equal. Trade-off. Now, if it's a trade-off, well, it's not needed. Now, you, well, you leave, ideally, you would like to know what kind of steel it is made of, this mild steel. You also want to, ideally, you hope you can match it with the, the heating element with the same mild steel. But nevertheless, you'll be able to find out how far they're off, even made of steel to steel. So, um, with that said, you would uh, just drop, take the existing cathode out, chop it down real slow, real low. Clean it, you know, clean it up, empty your tank of all that nasty existing water you let stagnate and get bacteria in it and become uh, egg smell, which is really sulfur, really dangerous. So um, no matter what they tell you. So um, deadly. 
So um, put it, it can be deadly. Let me put it that way. It can be deadly. So put your cap back on, the old, the old, uh, the old rod, and let it ride. No, 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 uh, no cathodic reaction. No, um, no galvanic reaction is need, need to be worried about. Um, but if you're going to go back with one, I would try the aluminum. If you want to go back with one to, to give it the extra extra overkill in that tank now, I'd go back with this aluminum. With that said, I am hanging up this whole deal. Enjoy yourself.